So Gerardo, for our audience who's never heard from you before, uh, can you tell us what you do and what your experience is? Absolutely. So I write for The Outsider Club, which is founded by Nick Hodge. And so I write two premium newsletters, Junior Mining Monthly and Junior Mining Trader. And those are subscription-based newsletters. But the Outside of Club website also includes a free editorial that I write every week. And so you get to hear some of my opinions about the resource space. All right. So what are you um, talking about here at this conference that investors have been very interested in? You know, Nick and I actually had a workshop yesterday. And the title of the workshop was The Good, the Bad, the Ugly in the Junior Mining Space. And so we spent about an hour nearly going over some, some red flags, some things you want to look out for when you're considering an investment or speculation in the resource space and so you want to look at share structure you want to look at jurisdiction you want to look at insider ownership right you want to make sure that management has skin in the game and so it was a workshop really about some of the good people in the business and what they're doing the right way and some of the people that may be good people but just are not doing right. it the right way well I want to know about the ugly you know I know you called out some companies so let's let's put sure. it on camera here sure um, we, we, we picked on one, and again, I'm sure it's a great group of people. It's a talented management team, uh, but Alexandra Minerals, you know, they had an excellent, excellent set of results yesterday. I believe it was something like 18 meters of eight grams per ton gold. And you would expect that in this market where people are a bit more optimistic, there would have been a better response than a half a cent increase in share price, right? Or a penny increase in share price. And it just didn't happen. And it's funny because we kind of predicted that it wouldn't happen based on the share structure. Mm. They have, I think, nearly 500 million shares outstanding. They have almost 100 million warrants. And I understand we're coming out of a brutal bear market, but at some point you got to give consideration to the retail side of the shareholder base. And when you have that many warrants outstanding and hanging over the stock, it's never going to move past right. that six, seven cent mark. And so that was an example of maybe great people, maybe great assets, but definitely an ugly share structure. Right. Well, thank you so much for that uh, insight. Let's move on to talk about what you've ri written about recently on the Outsider Club. Sure. Um, you compared Moss and Resources to Nova Resources. Why did you do that? I did. You know, the, the inspiration for that piece was actually me thinking out loud. Novo, every time there's a video, a YouTube video or a video at the Denver Gold Forum. People are interested. Uh, the stock moves 15, 20 percent, right? And that's not inconsequential when you have a market cap of over a billion dollars. You know, you're adding two, three hundred million dollars on every news release. And so Mawson Resources has a district scale land package in Finland. And they, they put out a release where they're sampling over 2,000 grams per ton in outcrop. Hmm. And I just wondered out loud if Novo had put out that release how much would have been added to their market cap, right? Would you have seen a two or three or 400 million increase in their market cap? And it was interesting to me because Mawson's entire market cap is $50 million. Oh, much smaller. And so when you look at the difference between an investment and a speculation, I, I thought it was a fair point to write the article and just right. think out loud what right. would have happened had, had Novo released these results. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe Mawson is undervalued and an opportunity to look at. It's a good group of guys in, a, in an area that they haven't been able to drill for years. Mm -hmm. And now they got their permits back and they're back exploring and they're turning up some amazing numbers. Really good. Well, aside from Mawson, do you have any other stock picks uh, that you can share with us? Uh, I, I can. You know, I was recently at a project um, in Idaho. I think there's a revival, no pun intended, in Idaho. And the company's name is actually Revival Gold. Well, there you go. Yeah. And it's headed by a gentleman. <laughs> Gentleman by the name of Hugh Agro um, of Kinross fame. He is a very pragmatic, experienced CEO who not only understands how to add value to a gold company, but he also understands the capital markets. And so they recently raised $9 million. They have a historic resource between two projects of about 1.6 million ounces near surface with deep sulfide potential. Uh, market cap is about 45 to 50 million dollars right now, so I think that's an excellent opportunity in the space. To jump right in now. right now at this time? Absolutely, okay. uh, absolutely. It's full disclosure. It's one of my recommendations in one of the newsletters, and mm -hmm. something that I'm personally invested in. So All right. I, I eat my own cooking. All right. Well, Gerardo, thank you for your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you.